Hey, I am three plus key, your favorite social worker. Welcome back. I, as always, am here to encourage you to pursue the smile, baby. And you do that by prioritizing the Lord, your physical health, and persistent education, whatever that last part might mean to you. Um, so today, I wanted to go through seemingly randomly, uh, I wanted to go through the second chapter of Mark. Um, I have a, uh, a little guy of a family friend and, um, I said, uh, you know, you want to go through Mark together? And he was with it. So I visited him and did a rousing rendition <laughs> of, uh, Jesus in the wilderness, Jesus getting baptized and him going through the wilderness for 40 days being tempted by Satan and coming out of it victorious, greeted by the angels. And then he went on uh, to do his first healing uh, of, a, of a man. So he healed a, 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 a man with leprosy. And that was chapter one. So anyway, I'm about to go visit uh, my little guy here pretty soon. And we're going to go over chapter two of Mark. And with that said, I thought I would go through it with you first, um, primarily because I, again, am not a Bible teacher, but um, I wish to share my world with you and I would have been sitting here reading it anyway. So. Um, the point of me going through Mark with my little guy is I want him to know how much Christ loves him and also that Christ didn't just sit around waiting for life to happen. He prayed for others and then he sought to see how he could be of assistance. Okay, so there's the spiritual aspect of helping somebody, we must pray for others always, first and foremost. We are not doing anything. It's all the Lord. And um, that's truly what you need is an intercession. You need to intercede on another person's behalf. Practically speaking, you know, maybe there is a way you could help um, unload their burden even if it's in a tiny way. J James 3 tells us if a man comes to you and he's hungry, send him away with a prayer and food. If he comes to you cold, send him away with prayer and your jacket, right? And that's what I want my little guy to understand is that A, Christ loves him, and B, there are things you can do for others that are very helpful and practical. So here we are, chapter two. I'm going to read the verse and then read the commentary. And if I have something to add, I will. So we'll start off. Jesus is about to do his second healing. Again, Mark chapter two, verse one. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home they gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door. And he preached the word to them. Verse three, some men came bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. The commentary, the paralyzed man's need moved his friends to action and they brought him to Jesus. When you recognize someone's need, do you act? Many people have physical and spiritual needs you can meet either by yourself or with others who are also concerned. Human need moved these four men. Let it also move you to compassionate action. Verse four. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd. They made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the mat the man was lying on. Commentary. 
The crowd that had gathered made it impossible to bring the paralyzed man close to Jesus. Successful churches or busy Christians can be oblivious to people in need who want to see Jesus. Strippers, gangbangers, um, uh, drug addicts, and other groups. There are people within these groups that express that they want to know Christ. But the way we uh, react to that is so vital for um, that person's growth. It's true. If some churches are too crowded or the people too disinterested, a person who is in need may simply wander away. How sad when the people in a church are so preoccupied with their own relationships and agendas that they don't even see those who are trying to get in. That should never happen. Where Jesus is present, may the faces of the faithful reflect his love. May their hands extend to greet all newcomers and seekers as friends. And may they open a way for others to come in. What are you doing about it, friend? Are you inviting people to your church with you, to your church gatherings? When a new person comes in, do you leave your own group to go greet this person? Are you a role model in that regard in your Christian space, friend? Another commentary, houses in biblical times were built of stone. They had flat roofs made of mud mixed with straw. Outside stairways led to the roofs. These friends may have carried the paralyzed man up the up outside stairs to the roof. They could easily have taken apart the mud and straw mixture to make a hole through which to lower their friend to Jesus. Verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Verse 6. Now, some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Commentary. The teachers of the law were in a perfect position, sitting where they could observe and criticize. Some sitting Christians follow their example. Is the music at church too fast or too loud? Is the sermon too long or too short? Do people aggravate you by dressing too casually or sitting where you usually sit? How much time do you spend worshiping in church and how much time do you spend complaining and criticizing? Ooh. Ooh. Uh oh. Try a little healthy activism, the kind that gets involved in the church, working with fellow believers toward real progress or common goals, such as sharing the good news, helping those in need, and building strong and caring disciples of Christ. Are you criticizing the church or changing the world? Amen. Verse 8. Immediately, Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, why are you thinking these things? Which is easier to say to this paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take your mat and walk. But I want you to know that the son of man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Commentary. This is the first time in Mark that Jesus refers to himself as the Son of Man, a title emphasizing that he is fully human. Because remember, Jesus is fully human and fully God. The title Son of God, for example, in John chapter 10, verse, uh, excuse me, chapter 20, verse 31, emphasizes that he is fully God. As God's son, Jesus has the authority to forgive sin. As a man, he can identify with our deepest needs and sufferings and help us overcome sin. Verse 11. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. Commentary. Excuse me. 
verses 8 through 11. Before saying to the paralyzed man, get up, Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. To the Jewish leaders, this statement was blasphemous. That means against God. A claim to do something only God could do. According to the law, the punishment for this sin was death. The religious leaders understood correctly that Jesus was claiming divine prerogatives, but their judgment was wrong. Jesus was not blaspheming. His claim was true. Jesus is God, and he proved his claim by healing the paralyzed man. Amen. Verse 12. He got up, this is the man, he got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. We'll end here, but I think an interesting takeaway is how do we respond to the blessings that we witness for others? Do you know what I mean? Like if our neighbor wins a million dollars, are we happy for them? Do we praise God for another person? I know we praise God for ourselves, but we have a come up, baby. We up. Praise God. Do we also praise God for the blessings of others? I think there's um, something beautiful in, 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 in being able to do that. Right? That's really being help, um, happy for somebody else. Um, uh, um, unbelievable in awe of how good the Lord is because this person is receiving such satisfaction, such, such a miracle, such a blessing in their life. It's something to reflect on, friend. Anyway, um, I will get back to Mark verse 13 at a later date, uh, perhaps the next time I meet with my little buddy. Um, in the meantime, I am three plus key, your favorite social worker forever and always encouraging you to pursue the smile by prioritizing the Lord, your physical health and persistent education. What I would love, love, love for you to do is to be a new subscriber and help this channel grow. Um, I do love the Lord and I'm just sharing my, my journey and in, in getting closer to him and becoming a healthier person in all regards. So subscribe to this channel, like the video if you love it, share it with someone who could find this beneficial. Um, and comment below uh, what you think or do you praise God uh, for other people's success? Let me know. Uh, and as always, I will. Talk to you later.